Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the latest in the Geotox Express series, as you can hopefully see on the screen. In this session, we're going to be talking about our training programs, Blue Marble Geographics training programs. Uh, and as you can also see, I'm joined today by a, a large group of co-presenters. I think this is probably the largest group of presenters we've had for any of these, uh, these webinars. Um, the folks that you see listed on screen all participate and uh, instruct in our training classes and we want to give them an opportunity to uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of those training options as we get deeper into, uh, into this presentation. So um, before we begin, as is typical, um, we're going to cover some of the obligatory housekeeping issues. Um, we are as I'm sure you've figured out already, uh, in listen-only mode, or you are in listen-only mode, which means uh, you can hear me, I hope you can hear me, um, but unfortunately we can't hear you. Um, this is a one-way delivery. Um, I know many of you have been through our webinars before, so you're familiar with that. Um, that said, we do want you to participate. You will have an opportunity to interact with myself or, or, or my co-presenters, uh, ask questions, ask questions on some of the content that we're covering or indeed in any of our uh, the options we have for training. Um, to ask questions, you'll see a panel over there on the right side in the GoToWebinar uh, control panel. Uh, you can type your questions in there. I have a large second window open here and I can see those questions as they come in. And as you ask questions, we will likely verbally respond to those questions. On occasion, we may type a response, but I think it's probably more appropriate that we um, recite your question, then we'll answer that verbally uh, in the appropriate context. So please, again, keep those questions coming in as we go through our content. And this session is being recorded, so I know for many of you, you are watching the recording. Uh, those of, of you who are here for the live event, uh, you will have a, an, op an opportunity within a few days uh, to go back and, and uh, recap this content and maybe share it with your colleagues if you think it would be useful for them to, to see this content as well. Um, as we always do during these presentations, we want to remind you of uh, some of the uh, webinars that are coming up on the horizon. Very excited. Uh, within a month, we're going to be releasing version 25 of Global Map. I can't believe we're up to version 25 already. Hard, hard, time flies. Um, so we're going to have an introduction to that. Uh, new version of Global Mapper as the topic of our webinar, September 27th, a little over a month from now. So mark your calendars, or better yet, go ahead and register for that one. I know it will be a popular one. Those What's New webinars always get a, a large crowd coming out. So that will be September 27th, followed right after the following week by a specific look at what's new in Global Mapper Pro. Again, version 25 of Global Mapper Pro will be the focus of our October webinar. Moving into November, we're going to shift our focus to Geographic Calculator, uh, specifically to Service Pack 1 of the 2023 release, and we're going to be taking a look at what's new in that uh, new version of, of Geographic Calculator. And as always, you can see the URL at the bottom of the screen. These, these as you know from today's presentation, require registration. Go ahead and register now. Um, you'll be sent a reminder when the, the date is coming close. So you can go to our website and uh, uh, register for those events. Today, uh, again, there's going to be multiple participants in this presentation. We're going to a little bit of screen share, juggling back and forth. Hopefully, everything will go uh, according to plan. We're going to start by providing a brief overview of the training opportunities that we provide for our customers. Um, we have online training, we have in-person training, we have public, we have private, and we want to make sure you understand what options are available so you can decide uh, which would be best for you. So I'll begin with a kind of very high level uh, overview. Then we're going to, going to be looking at some more details of those options. Um, brand new, I'm sure many of you received notification earlier in the week, we've just released the Blue Marble Online Classroom. And Mackenzie, one of my colleagues, is going to be guiding you through that process, the setup of that process, how you can participate, and specifically looking at the, uh, the uh, Global Mapper introduction that we've included on that platform. Continuing with the Global Mapper theme, uh, I've invited Gus and Yu Ning, two of our technical support folks who are also instructors, to give you a little bit of an overview on how we teach Global Mapper, um, both from kind of a theoretical point of view, but also a practical point of view. I want to show you an example of one of the workflows that you will uh, participate in if you attend one of our public classes, whether that be in person or whether that be online. So we'll, we'll take a look at our Global Mapper instructor-led classes. Shifting our focus, uh, we're going to look at geographic calculator training as well. Now, to begin that, we're going to go back and revisit the, the again, recently introduced Blue Marble Online Classroom, and Jenna Nelson is going to take a look at uh, the introduction to geographic calculator 
uh, uh, component of that. She's going to guide us through some of the the, uh, the topics or lessons that are included in that. For those of you who have never used that application, you, you may be familiar with it. This gives you an opportunity to explore that, and maybe if you're using Global Mapper, you can take a look at that application and see what's involved. Um, and again, Jenna's going to guide us through that platform a little bit later. Um, to wrap up our session, um, we've, uh, I've invited Scott Weber along. Scott is one of our product managers specifically focused on uh, geographic calculator, and he's going to talk a little bit about our applied geodesy class. This is the oldest class that we have. We've been delivering this one for well over a decade uh, in many parts of the world. Very popular class, um, and Scott is going to show us um, the structure of that class, it uh, begins with some theoretical introduction to the principles of geodesy and then uh, transitions into a look at geographic calculator specifically. And as I said, Scott is going to, to guide us through that process a little bit later in our session. So that is the roadmap for today's uh, webinar. Um, I want to begin, again, my role here is very easy. I'm just going to give a very high level overview of some of these programs that are available. Um, to begin, and I don't want to take too much of what Mackenzie's going to be uh, covering in just a little minute, but I want to uh, remind you of the, uh, the Blue Marble Online Classroom. Uh, you should have received an email. Those of you who are on our communication list would have re received notification. If you haven't, well, it is now available. This is a um, just released self-training platform that um, we've developed to allow you as a, a new user of Global Mapper or indeed of Geographic Calculator to get the information you need uh, to help you get started with the software. As I said, just released, these are self-paced. You can do it in your own pace. You can uh, focus on a particular area of the software if necessary, or you can go through the entire course. Uh, very easy to follow. It is hands-on. We encourage participation. Uh, we will be providing instructions as well as data that allows you to participate in this class. So you'll have an opportunity to download some files and then follow along as we provide instruction on how to use some of the basic tools within both Global Mapper and Geographic Calculator. Written instructions, a lot of people like to read step by step, but we also include some video presentations to demonstrate the tools that we're going to try to focus on. So multimedia approach to providing that introduction to our software, getting you up and, and running uh, with uh, some of the basic functionality. And as I noted, um, at this point, we have an introduction to Global Mapper as our, our one of our courses, as well as an introduction to Geographic Calculator. We will be looking at adding additional courses in due course. This platform gives us an opportunity to uh, you know, uh, provide a tool that will allow you to train on our software at your own pace, in your own time. So very excited about this new training opportunity. Uh, we also offer, as we have noted, uh, instructor-led training. And again, this goes back many years. Um, if you think back to the pre-pandemic uh, timeframe, most of our classes during that time were in person. and We traveled literally to every continent. I don't think we've done training in Antarctica yet, but every continent we've had training classes um, um, they typically sell out. Um, you know, folks coming from different backgrounds, different industries to participating in these classes. Obviously, when the pandemic hit, we had to shift our focus and we seamlessly transitioned those to be online. So these courses are available as an online um, uh, uh, I didn't know, uh, pre presentation, online meeting, if you like it. But again, participation is encouraged, even if you are online. Um, we cover all aspects of the software in these classes. And as I noted, Gus and Yu Ning in a few minutes are going to show you uh, just one example of a workflow and to show you how that aspect of our training works. So uh, if you're interested in getting that A to Z or A to Z uh, you know, introduction to not just the basics of the software, but its full capability, you can sign up for one of these classes. And again, instructor-led, interactive. They are workflow-based. That means we don't just show you a tool and what it does, but we've built scenarios that simulate real-world scenarios. And again, we provide data uh, that allows you to uh, uh, follow along. And we even have a, a, a handout that we can take away with you. So you'll have your own instructional guide that you can use in your own time and maybe revisit some of those themes a little bit later. These classes are available for uh, Global Mapper and indeed for Geographic Calculator. And we'll be hearing from, uh, as I said, Yu Ning and, and Gus, as well as Scott a little bit later to, to see some details about these. Um, I want to quickly now uh, show our calendar just by virtue of the fact that I've just uh, described some of our, our public classes. These are enrollment based classes. Um, I'll, I'll just go through our calendar. Um, coincidentally, we are in the middle of one of our classes right now. Um, this is a class that we're delivering um, to primarily to folks in the Far East, uh, Oceania, Australia, New Zealand. It's The delivery is fairly late for us here in the Eastern US. It's a nine to midnight class, but we have a class that's ongoing. The final session is actually tonight for that class. So unfortunately, you missed out when those of you who are uh, somewhere east of where I am, you'll have to wait to the next round of classes to, to sign up for that one. But what we have coming up 
in October, um, we have a, our Global Mapper class. This again is an online class. This one is, I have to look at my notes here, this is a, a um, morning session uh, here in the Eastern US. Now that means it would be ideally suited for those folks in Europe because it will be an afternoon session for you. Obviously, we, we adjust our delivery to meet local schedules, local time zones, so this is gonna be convenient for those of you, obviously in the Eastern US, but also uh, for those in uh, in Europe. Uh, right afterwards, so next week, we do a Global Mapper class. The Global Mapper training online is a multi-day, you know, fairly short sessions. We don't wanna kind of have you sit down through long online sessions, so three hour blocks, first week Global Mapper, we follow the following week, but with a LiDAR class as well, slightly shorter LiDAR class. Um, repeating that process in November into December, we've got our Global Mapper training and indeed our LiDAR training. These are open enrollment, sign up and participate in these classes. The November classes and November, December classes are afternoon here in the Eastern US, which again is ideally suited for folks in this part of the world, but also a little bit further west from where I am. So if you're in the Western US, Western Canada, this might be the class that you wanna sign up for. These are online classes. These are the options that are available between now and the end of the year. We have also um, um, organized a, an in-person class. We've actually done this a couple of times already since we kind of came out from our enforced quarantine during the uh, pandemic. We've done a couple of in-person classes, one in Australia, very well attended. We did one in Orlando as well. And again, very good participation in those classes. Our next road trip, training road trip, is gonna take us to Denver, Colorado, uh, mid-November. So if you're in that part of the world or if you would like to visit Denver, beautiful city to visit, um, uh, you can sign up for this one, the 14th to the 16th. We've actually extended, extended this class a little bit to accommodate some of the requests that have come from previous attendees to give more time. So we'll be looking at more detail in this class. Uh, again, Global Mapper for three days. We've got a single day LiDAR class. You can sign up for either uh, or both of these sessions. If you do sign up for both, by the way, as Gus will note later, you'll get a certificate of completion uh, for having completed both of those classes. So that's a little bit about our, um, our public classes that are available. Final, uh, and you'll note by the way here, the uh, website you can go to to register for this. Um, I will be sharing some more contact information on our website at the end of the session. Final option here, and I'm, I'm overstaying my, uh, my, my welcome here. I wanna hand over to Mackenzie in just a second, but it is worth noting we also have private training. We also refer to this as custom training. This gives you as a company or organization the opportunity to um, conduct or be, to participate in a training class that's developed specifically for you. We are a kind of an, as a recurring um, a component, we're actually involved in recurring training for a lot of organizations as it is right now. Some government agencies have ongoing training with us and we can customize that content. Um, it is uh, you know, loosely based on what we deliver for our public classes, but we can also adapt as needed to address the specific needs of an individual company or organization. Um, can be conducted online, in person, can also be conducted at whatever time is appropriate. So we can adapt uh, our instruction to meet your needs specifically, and indeed can incorporate your data. Uh, this is where the real benefit is. While our public classes will do a very good job of introducing the full capability of the software, uh, only if you focus that on your needs are you gonna get something that actually does address your specific needs and requirements, and that is definitely recommended. As I note here, if you have multiple users who are interested in training, this is by far the best option that you'll have. Um, I'll give you some contact information at the end of this presentation, so you can contact us and we can discuss uh, that, uh, the setup process for our, your, our custom or, as I said, private training. So that gives you a brief overview of some of the programs that we have available, some of the ways that which we train. Um, but we're gonna go into a little more detail on some of these. We're gonna begin that guided tour of uh, the Blue Marble Training Options by uh, taking a quick look at our newly released Blue Marble Online Classroom. Now I'm gonna hand over to Mackenzie here and she's going to walk through um, the setup for that process. So Mackenzie, I will give you control here and you should be able to drive from there. All right. Thank you, David, uh, for that great introduction. And as David mentioned, uh, my name is Mackenzie Mills. I'm an associate product manager here at Blue Marble Geographics. Um, and I'm really excited to introduce you guys to the online classroom site that we now have that supports um, a couple courses to start with, with plans to expand to more. Um, this is the homepage of, of training.bluemarblegeo.com, which is our online classroom. And see, see, it clearly says that. And right at the front here, we list our two current courses that we have, an introduction to Global Mapper, which I will take a look at some of that content in a minute, 
And then we also have an introduction to Geographic Calculator, our other main product from Blue Marble Geographics. And um, my colleague Jenna will be taking a look at this online course a little bit later in this webinar. So to get started with the online classroom, um, you will need to register to create an account on this site. Um, register can be found right up in the top right of that main menu bar uh, at the top of the online classroom site. And we're just asking for some basic information, email, you know, create a username and password. Um, and this is how your progress along different courses will be saved. So you can stop and return to these courses because that really is the power of an online self-driven course like this. Um, it is important to note that this login, this registration for the Blue Marble Online Classroom is a separate login than the main Blue Marble Geographics website where you may go to purchase or um, download a trial or install the you know, software programs themselves, Global Mapper and Geographic Calculator. So if you've never been to the online classroom before, you will need to go through this registration step. Um, but once you are registered, you can go ahead and log in or as I will do here, I'm going to return to our main home page and just click start course for our introduction to Global Mapper course. I'm not currently logged in, but I do have an account with our online classroom. So I will log in to enroll here. And Looks like I mistyped my password. Let me try that again. And once I log in, um, a little more information about the course is unlocked here. And I simply click to take this course to officially enroll in it. The same information is on screen as was before with a little bit more attached. Up at the top, we have a progress bar showing how far along this course I've gone so far, um, how complete I am through all of the steps of this course. I've just enrolled, so I'm at 0% complete. This main course page that we have details some course requirements, which are um, access to the Blue Marble Global Mapper software. Um, that can be downloaded from our website and a free trial can be requested there as well. So currently we're on version 24.1. You can download Global Mapper from here and start a free trial and that is linked directly from the course. Returning to our course page, we also have some data that, uh, we, that you are required to download in order to complete this course. So a link here will download that data. It will come in a zipped file um, and that will contain all of the data files, workspaces, what you need in order to work through all of the content in this self-driven course um, as you go through on your own time. Um, David, if you have that data open on your machine, I uh, you could just show the structure of that. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have it conveniently stored with apologies, Mackenzie, but uh, well, yeah, it's, it's basically, it's individual files and then there's going to be a folder called my maps and my maps is where we would suggest when you complete a section if you need to save a workspace or export data that you can put that in that folder so again apologies Mackenzie I don't have that uh, currently displayed that's all right it's very similar to some data that we'll uh, take a look at later for the um, global mapper uh, instructor-led courses. It's sort of the same data structure where, as David said, a lot of files are provided and then an empty My Maps folder where you can save workspaces or files as you complete them um, as you work throughout the course. Conti continuing down this main course page, there are some notes on the course structure. Um, we've got a few icons sprinkled throughout indicating that, you know, you'll need to use some of that downloaded data, some tips and tricks, some videos, indications of workflow steps and quizzes. Um, so just some notes on, on how to operate the course in this online classroom. And then some additional resources, which include um, our Global Mapper user guide for this course, which is our complete help files, where you can find um, answers to a lot of questions and some of the more specified settings that you may encounter in the Global Mapper um, user interface. Below that, we have the course content. 
Now, these are all expandable sections, and the way this course is set up is we have the main overarching course, an introduction to global mapper. Within that course, we have various lessons, and within those lessons, we have some topics, breaking down that content further into manageable chunks so that you can work through this, you know, as you have time um, related to your other work. All of these sections are expandable, so you can explore, you know, what is contained in each lesson. And at the end of each lesson, there is a quiz um, just to test your knowledge to see if you've grabbed the main takeaways um, from each lesson here. So I'll come back up and I will start with lesson one to just show a little bit of what this course content looks like. Um, the lesson page is just a brief overview of, of what's included here. And I'll start in on the first topic, the introductory screen. Now this is all about opening Global Mapper for the first time, what you're gonna see and you know, what these different buttons mean. These big text buttons right on screen of the program are actually clickable um, in the installed Global Mapper program. And we go through you know, what all of those mean. We say, hey, you might wanna click the load default data button to get a world map to pop up, get some data loaded into Global Mapper just to see what that looks like. And then in the online classroom courses here, at the bottom of each topic, there will be a summary, which summarizes the main takeaways from the topic. And they all do include a knowledge base link, again, bringing you to the Global Mapper help pages here where you can find more information on the topic that was taught in that specific um, section here. Once I'm done with a lesson, or with a topic, I can mark complete and I'll be shuffled along to the next one. Up at the top here, we do have a progress bar. We've got three topics in this lesson, so we see that we are a third of the way there at this point. And we're on to learning more about the interface, how to navigate the program, looking at some menus and toolbars. Um, in addition to written content with some images throughout these courses, we also have videos that include narration. So I'll go ahead and mute this video, but it's good to note that all of the videos in the course do include some narration. They are all screen recordings of the Global Mapper interface showing you different sections of the interface, how to interact with it, loading data, maybe a few key workflow steps. Um, and it's just another way to communicate this content to help as many people um, understand as fully as possible. Once again, we get to our topic summary with a few links to um, additional information. We can mark complete, go on to the third topic in this lesson. See, we've got more images, written content, and video content here. And I'll quickly scroll through this lesson um, until we get to the bottom, being the third topic in this lesson we have a link to take a simple three question quiz. Now there is a quiz at the end of each lesson. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I there think is maybe a quiz need to more complete first. Yeah. To mark complete here and navigate to the quiz this way um, where I am able to start the quiz from that lesson page. Um, these quizzes are not required for you to complete. Um, you don't have to, you know, strive for 100% on these quizzes. They are all very simple three-question quizzes. Um, but as we answer the questions here, we'll be able to see the results. Once we finish the quiz, we've gotten 100% on that. Um, and we can, you know, restart the quiz if necessary, view the questions. You know, or click to continue on in the course, you know, bringing us back to that lesson page, allowing us to move to the next lesson. Now, as I mentioned, the beauty of an online course here is um, you can do this in your own time. You don't have to sit down and work through the entire course in one go. We've broken it down into these lessons and topics to make these manageable chunks to do over a few minutes, 10 minutes here or there. Um, if I were to navigate away from the Blue Marble Online Classroom, come back to it, I can log in. I'm logged in right now, so I have a profile button at the corner. 
but there will be a login button if you're not logged in. And when you're logged into the online classroom, as I said, that login will allow the classroom to remember your course progress. So if I click start course again, you can see we've, we've filled in a little bit of that progress bar. And down below in the course content, we have lesson one checked off here. Now I'm gonna skip down over lesson two, coming to lesson three, just to show a workflow and how that is noted in um, these courses. So I'll move on to the first topic in lesson three on importing data and managing a workspace. And up at the top, we note that we're gonna create a file um, that will be used in additional lessons in this course. And we can see that we have some workflow steps clearly described. Now these have, we'll be using that data that you initially downloaded for the course, all of the data files should be there. And these will walk you through different ways, in this case, to load some data files into Global Mapper. And through the three or four workflows on this page, we can see in the screenshots the list of data in the program growing. So we're creating a workspace here that as a final step, we will save that um, to your My Maps folder with a specific name. Because if I continue on to the next um, topic in this lesson, we will see a note at the top of the topic indicating that we are going to use a previously created or saved workspace file. Um, so some of these lessons do build on each other. You know, in the last topic, we created a workspace by loading some data into Global Mapper, a good basic starting point. You know, we're gonna add more data to this workspace in this lesson um, via the online uh, data access tools. Um, so again, we have some video content in this lesson and then a workflow as well. So all of the lessons and topics in the in this course and in the courses we have here on the online classroom do follow this same structure. Um, you can stop in the middle of the lesson, you know, wherever you would like, um, in order to, you know, work through the the topics that are relevant to you. Um, if I come back up to the top of the page. One more place I want to explore on this website is the profile tab. We can see that this is my profile. I am enrolled in one course. I have not yet completed that course, um, but here I can see that course progress and I can see any quiz results. So if you've gone through a few different lessons and taken the quizzes, you can start to see whether you're you know, getting 100% on those quizzes, if that's something that you're striving for through this course, or whether um, there are certain areas that you may want to revisit um, in the course to, to relearn or reread the content and make sure that you're understanding it fully and getting the most out of your global mapper. With that, I'll return to the main page of the online classroom because we will be back on the site a little bit later um, as Jenna introduces the introduction to geographic calculator online training. Um, but that is all I have for the introduction to global mapper training. This is a free course, so anyone can register and, and enroll in this course, um, but it is also advised as a precursor to the instructor-led training, which I believe is the next topic for our discussion here today. Yes, it is. Uh, there, were, there have been a few questions pertaining to access issues. Just to clarify, um, kind of reiterate something that uh, Mackenzie mentioned, this login that you're gonna use is not related to your BMG login. I know a lot of you uh, have an account with us. Um, you're more than welcome to use the same information, but you still have to register that manually. So just make sure that is the case. If you have any other technical issues, uh, we did put some contact information as well within the, the site itself. Let us know. And unfortunately, we can't resolve those issues during this webinar, but we'll help you make sure you have access if you're having other technical issues. Uh, other questions, Mackenzie, someone is asking about cost. You already mentioned that at the end. This is a free course. The two courses we have, one of which Mackenzie demonstrated, now we'll see another one in a few minutes. Uh, they're, they're free. There's no cost for doing this. Um, as we proceed with this, um, we'll likely have more advanced courses that we'll incorporate into the platform. Thank you, Mackenzie, for sharing that. Uh, let me take back 
uh, the screen here, just one second, and taking a quick look at our checklist here, we're going to transition into a quick overview of what we deliver for instructor-led training. I've invited Gus and Yu Ning to give us a quick demonstration of how that process works. Um, so let me again make sure that everything is uh, up and uh, running as far as screen share is concerned. Gus, you should have uh, uh, access to my uh, screen, or it looks like you do. So Gus, why don't you guide us through this process? Excellent. Thank you, David. So we've gone over the self-guided online training, which is a uh, new option. And but we also have our instructor-led public training classes. And these are going to be a little bit more in-depth. And you're also going to have access to that Global Mapper instructor, that Global Mapper expert, uh, to allow you to uh, get, get a little more insight uh, into the software. So we offer two public training classes, Introduction to Global Mapper, which is going to give you a overview of all the major concepts and components of Global Mapper, and also our LiDAR processing class, which is going to give you a good introduction to all the point cloud processing tools in Global Mapper and Global Mapper Pro. So a couple weeks before your public training class begins, whether it be a remote class, as we do, as David noted, we do have remote options and uh, in-person options available, you're going to receive an email that contains all the um, materials that you need in order to participate in that class. This is going to include temporary licenses for the software, as well as a link to the self-guided um, online training. This is a good uh, way for new users to become a little more familiar with the basics before jumping into the slightly more applied uh, scenario of the actual class itself and to get more experienced users maybe we'll get a good uh, refresher on some of the basics. So you're also going to receive a uh, folder, a zip folder containing some sample data and this is going to range a wide variety of vector and raster data formats. You're also going to receive some pre-constructed global mapper workspace files and also the My Maps folder, which you're going to use throughout training uh, to save through uh, incrementally as you complete different exercises. You're also going to re receive this instructional handout. It's going to have these step-by-step -step instructions, which are going to include uh, images of all settings and uh, everything pertinent for you to be able to follow along with the instructor throughout the actual training. So let's talk a little bit about kind of our teaching methodology and our uh, philosophy like we like to apply to these classes. The One of the main things that I want to emphasize is that these are instructor-led classes. You have access to that global mapper expert uh, who's going to be able to guide you through these exercises. But we don't want these to feel like a lecture. We want to emphasize that we really appreciate and strongly encourage participation and asking questions and interacting uh, with the attendees. And this is all either in the form of time allowing and if the class size is small enough, maybe some verbal interaction, um, if that's a little too hectic, we will always have two instructors uh, in a remote class and we can provide some of that direct interaction uh, through asking questions in the chat. These are hands-on trainings. So an instructor is going to walk through an exercise or a workflow live in Global Mapper and attendees are going to have the opportunity to follow along in their own instance. Uh, we recommend uh, the best setup is having, if you have access to two monitors, have one monitor up with your instance of Global Mapper and have a second monitor up with your uh, handout so you can easily scroll up and down and follow along. And lastly, our curriculum is workflow-based. So it's designed to try to mimic the real-life use cases of the software. As an example of this, many of these exercises are kind of sequential in nature. So the output of one is often going to be incorporated in a uh, exercise a little bit down the road. It should be mentioned that 
Uh, these are not industry specific uh, workflows, but rather we wanna kind of keep them generic in order to make them as widely applicable to a wider range of fields if possible. Uh, if you are interested in receiving training that is catered a little more specifically to your particular use case and needs, I would uh, definitely recommend looking into our custom training options, as David mentioned. And this is a method of getting a little more focused and specific curriculum included. So for anyone who completes both our Introduction to Global Mapper training and our LIDAR processing class, you have the opportunity to become a Global Mapper certified user and to earn this uh, Global Mapper uh, certification. So this is a good opportunity to come out the other end of these two training classes with something tangible that you can add to your GIS portfolio and to your resume. So now for a little sample of some of the, I've talked a lot about what this content entails and now we're going to look at a little example of one of these training exercises. My colleague Ning is going to walk through an exercise from the uh, LIDAR processing class. So I'm going to hand it over to her. Yeah, and I'll just interject here. So before we hand over to you, Ning, just addressing some of the questions. A specific question came in about um, language training. Um, do you ever offer training in anything other than English? Um, I think the best way to answer that is to refer to our resellers. We have a, a network of resellers globally. Um, many of whom actually deliver training as well. So if you are interested in training in a specific language, you can get in touch with us. We'll put you in touch with the appropriate reseller uh, and find out what either, again, custom or scheduled training that they have available. Um, Blue Marble, uh, the training we offer is in English, but there are other opportunities as well. Another question asked about training outside of the US. Uh, yes, we do train go globally. We will go where needed. Uh, as I noted at the start, we've done training classes in person in Australia many times uh, throughout Europe as well. So again, we will go where the demand is. We are a global company and we will certainly uh, address our global audience when it comes to training. So again, keep those questions coming in uh, as we go continue to go through these process, uh, uh, workflows. So with apologies, Yuning, I'm going to shift over to uh, an instance of Global Mapper. And as, I, as we noted, Yuning is going to guide us through one of the workflows itself. Sure, no problem. Thanks, Gus and uh, David. Uh, so what's uh, the Global Mapper training uh, instructor-led uh, training really looking like? Uh, I'm going to show you a, a, a quick demonstration. So suppose we are doing the public training. I will have two things uh, open. One is our PDF panel, uh, manual or the uh, printed one if you are uh, attend, uh, attending the uh, in-person class. And the other one is an instance of Global Mapper. So multiple screens, uh, as Gus uh, says, set up at your decks are recommended, especially you attend the uh, online training. Now let's go through an actual exercise. Uh, that's a part of our component of our LIDAR, public, uh, LIDAR processing public training class. Uh, it's about the ground point auto classification tool. Note that it is pa uh, part of our LIDAR processing class. So we will delivering materials separate from the ones for our another class called intro to uh, global mapper class. So different handouts and different data sets to be delivered for sure. Following the instruction in this section, we will first uh, briefly introduce what this exercise is about and the corresponding workspace we will need to load for this uh, exercise. Now we can back to uh, our software and uh, we will follow the instructions to have a workspace load. Uh, now it's called a LiDAR uh, ground workspace. So just let you know uh, this uh, generated point cloud layer uh, this point cloud is generated from overlapping drawn collecting images using photogrammetry methods with the pixel to point uh, tool, one of our most popular features in Global Mapper Pro. It's actually uh, also covered in the previous section in this sand LIDAR processing uh, training class. We are not uh, live demoing for that specifically, but just give, give you folks the context of this uh, workspace. Okay, so and this is just a thin, uh, yeah, this is a thin version actually from the original data. The thin tool was put previously uh, uh, used for data preparation already. So yeah, Sam is also covered in our LIDAR processing training. 
So these point clouds come from drone images. So usually they may uh, might not have been classified yet. Um, we can change the color draw mode in the drop down menu here to uh, verify if it is uh, unclassified. So it is show uh, in gray, which it is are in unclassified class. Now we can open the tool, uh, the ground auto classification tool in the LIDAR auto classification toolbox here. Uh, we will cover and explain the different parameters and the options in the dialogue, allowing folks to have a more in-depth understanding behind the concept of the tool and how it is better utilized So, in the, in the actual training. So uh, basically, as for the uh, algorithm for this tool, there are a part, two parts of the process. First part is to remove likely non-ground uh, points, such as buildings, vegetation. Um, you, user will be asked to determine several parameters here, such as the maximum height uh, difference, the maximum slope, uh, uh, terrain slope deviation, uh, uh, variation, and the maximum building width. So I, uh, I have set up uh, this uh, parameters here. So uh, it is, a uh, it is based on a local area of your point clouds. So uh, when we say, uh, quote, local area, unquote, is actually associated with the bin size, uh, which is also the one user have to manually specify. Uh, it's here, uh, point spacing, meters, and fit in different units. Smaller bin size increases the accuracy while increasing the speed of processing as well. Uh, the second part of this uh, algorithm is to further remove points from the ground points uh, that are away from the average minimum in height. That is exactly uh, the second parameters here. Um, I have set point two. Uh, basically, I will think this of uh, as the thickness of the ground for your data set. So uh, to run the LIDAR uh, auto classification tool like this, because um, parameters should really depends on the characteristics of the different uh, data sets. So user might need more trials and error for other cases in the real world. Also, we have a screenshot of the dialogue in the handout to show what the finished uh, dialogue will be looking like. So don't worry about that if you cannot catch up with the process in time uh, during the actual training class. Yeah, and then you will see in the uh, software, uh, in the map view, um, those points classified as brown have been marked and displaced uh, as uh, in brown, while other re uh, unclassified uh, points remains in gray. Our customer usually find this uh, ground points uh, useful when they further need to make a digital terrain model, a grid raster layer uh, using our elevation grid tool based on uh, this ground. Uh, ground point. So that exercise will actually also be covered in the uh, in our training class. So yeah, uh, a, ver a variety of the uh, topics we will cover. Every time when a section is gone through, we will encourage folks to save it as a new workspace. Uh, for uh, for each ex exercise in order to allow the workspace to be loaded back in the sequential section and also to avoid overriding the built-in workspace in case you want to uh, go back and perform this exercise again from the beginning. So I just uh, leave it uh, so uh, to save the workspace. for uh, And that's all for the Global Mapper public training day live demo today. I'm uh, handing over the screen control back to David and we can move on to the next section. Excellent. Well, thank you, Yuning. So again, that's that's a fairly typical workflow, a part of a sequential workflow. And as Yuning aptly demonstrated, you know, we don't just give you step by step instructions. That's the easy part. We we put it in context. We describe what's happening, uh, and you know, we obviously there was no questions in this case, but we take questions and uh, yeah, we we make sure you understand those tools. Thank you. That was a, a great demonstration of uh, of that functionality. Um, bringing back my checklist here. 
just to make sure we're on task. Um, again, we're going to uh, transition in a few minutes to looking at geographic calculator. Uh, as I said, revisiting our online classroom, and then Scott, as I said, was going to wrap up by looking at our applied geodesy class. Before we do that, um, you folks have been sitting listening to us for long enough, so we're going to have a little participation here. Um, I know many of you, just looking through the attendee list, have some familiar names in there. Uh, so I know many of you have actually attended training classes before. So we are going to ask you a question here. You're going to see your screen currently looking at my PowerPoint slide, is going to be replaced with a poll. Um, the poll is going to ask a very simple question, uh, which of the following Blue Marble training uh, courses have you participated in? I can't actually see the name of the question. I think it's words to that effect. Um, go ahead and answer your question. You can simply click right on your screen, grab your mouse, move around. Um, tell us if you have participated in training, which classes you have seen or participated in and um, maybe you haven't so you can click the none of the above option so um, again hopefully you're seeing that poll right on your screen um, I'm hoping that most of you say none of the above this is <laughs> unlike most of our polls because the reason you're here is to learn what training is about if you've been in training well we don't you know we don't need to do that so uh, yeah I'll give you a couple more seconds here to uh, to respond to that question interestingly a lot of you have already participated in the self-training that is great email just went out this week and already some of you have jumped in there so uh, again just a few more second and I'll, seconds and I'll close the poll um, and I will quickly then share the results with you. You can see who you're uh, sharing this class with. You can see most of you have not been in any training. Uh, well, you know what training is about now, at least part of the story. We're going to continue that in a second. So please do uh, at least participate in some of our self-training options or better, maybe an instructor-led class. Thank you for participating in our poll. Very interesting as always. Okay, uh, back to my bullet list here. Um, the next section, and we've got a couple left. Uh, we may overshoot the top of the hour by just a little bit. Hopefully that won't uh, impact your personal schedule too much, but we wanna make sure we're covering what we need to here. Um, our next section, we're going to revisit our online classroom. We're gonna take a look again at our browser-based uh, Blue Marble uh, online classroom, but we're gonna specifically look at uh, the geographic calculator component of that. And once again, I'm gonna make sure that our screen sharing is working appropriately. And I'm gonna bring up, make sure I bring the white window up here where Mackenzie left off. She had brought us back to the homepage again. So Jenna, Jenna Nelson, one of our tech support crew is gonna guide us through the introduction to geographic calculator. All right, thank you, David. So I'll be showing everyone how to access this course, what the course covers, and a, a quick example workflow from the course. So I am already logged in. Oh, do I do I have screen control, David? All right, I'm already, there we go. I am logged into the course uh, or into the new training Blue Marble um, website. Again, this is a new website that requires you to create a new registration uh, to access these courses. So make sure that you have, have registered on this website and then you should be able to see our two free courses that we have up here right now. So let's go ahead down to Geographic Calculator and start the course. Again, it's a very similar layout to what Mackenzie showed you earlier. Um, there, as far as course structure, uh, very similar layout. And we will have to actually uh, Go ahead and click take this course to get started. So now that I've clicked that, I should be able to see all the course content. So I'm very excited for this course because I'm hoping Global Mapper users or other users who aren't familiar with Geographic Calculator and maybe have never used coordinate conversion software, I'm hoping you'll take the opportunity to explore what this incredibly powerful software can do. So Global Mapper performs transformations on the fly, so to speak, but Geographic Calculator gives users the powers to set up and choose specific transformations, uh, many of which aren't available in Global Mapper. So this course is going to show you how easy it is to start using the software and some of the tools available. You don't need any prior experience um, with the software. So our first lesson is just all of this getting started material. Uh, so we cover what jobs, projects, workspaces are, what, how to use the preferences, basically how to navigate the software and some workflow optimization for those of you that'll be using it regularly. The second lesson covers interactive conversions 
this is basically a really easy to use tool that lets you quickly test a transformation on a single point. So we'll talk about um, just how to set that up. And, and if you are able to learn how to set that up, you'll see a lot of those same dialogues in the other tools. So as you can guess, these lessons are in a sequential manner that will help you um, understand the full software if you go through them in order. Lesson three covers point database conversions. And this is great if you are using a lot of tabular data such as uh, Excel or CSV. Lesson four is our vector data conversion lesson. And this is a popular topic, not just because you can obviously do vector files such as shapefiles, BWG, et cetera, but also because you can do LIDAR data conversion. So we've had a lot of users um, asking us about doing LIDAR transformations, maybe drone collected LIDAR, maybe needing to perform a vertical transformation, um, which you can't do in Global Mapper unless you have geographic calculator installed. So if that might be of interest to you to, to be able to do the vertical transformations, um, you definitely want to look into using geographic calculator. And then finally, lesson five is an on raster data transformation, which includes georeferencing within geographic calculator and transforming a digital elevation model. So that is a quick overview. Obviously, there are more tools available within calculator, but these are some great uh, workflows to help you get started. And I'm going to take you now through an example lesson. I'll actually go to the interactive conversion lesson. And I'm going to choose the vertical transformation lesson because, again, I think this is very relevant for uh, Global Mapper users that might be interested in, in supplementing Global Mapper with Geographic Calculator for this functionality. So in this lesson, like we are assuming you've gone through the previous ones, and so you you know a little bit about uh, how to navigate the page a little bit, but it is going to take you through step by step in how to set up the job. So first off, we get there's a, usually a little summary, sometimes a video explaining uh, any keywords in the topic and explaining what the goal of the example workflow will be. So in this case, we're converting a point from ellipsoidal height to geoid height. And as we follow along with the workflow, we have screenshots um, showing us exactly what, where we need to click, what we need to click on, what it should look like as we set up the job. Uh, we have, in this case, we're just typing in lat long values along with the height. But in some cases, we have data that you can download and use to process uh, as, as part of the hands-on component of the workflow. So again, similar to what Mackenzie showed you earlier with Global Mapper, if you download that data that accompanies the course, you can process it in the software as you follow along. So as you see, uh, I'm not going to launch the software right now because my colleague Scott is going to come on a little bit later and show you uh, a little bit of the software. But in here, in the lesson material, we have all of the dialogues that you need for following along with uh, the job. We also have tips and tricks um, and a summary. Again, links that will take you to our knowledge base page where you can learn more. And Again, it, I really strongly encourage people to download Calculator from our website and activate a free trial so you can follow along with these lessons. Um, to wrap this up, if, if you find this material interesting and you're thinking, oh, I want to, to learn more about transformations and more about coordinate systems, well, you may be interested in our next topic, which is our Geodesy course. So I'm going to hand it back to David now to tell you more about that. Yeah, some questions. I think you did answer most of the questions in the context of what you said, Jenna, but just a couple. Um, question about cost. Uh, these two courses that we're offering currently are 
there's no cost. You can register as uh, Mackenzie demonstrated initially the initial registration, but then take either of these two courses. There's no cost involved. For our instructor-led courses, there there is a cost. Um, you can see that information on our website. Um, private training obviously is going to have a cost as well. Contact us and we'll come up with what that is. We'll send a quote. Uh, will depend on the number of users, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yes, um, there are free training opportunities, uh, but there are obviously some um, more advanced training uh, uh, opportunities you can follow for for uh, a cost. Um, I am going to quickly go back to my PowerPoint and introduce our final speaker. Now, as I said at the start, um, Scott Weber is going to uh, be walking through a very brief kind of condensed version of what we deliver for our, our Applied Geodesy class. Applied Geodesy has been going on for well over a decade. It is it is kind of the foundation of Global Mapper, our Blue Marbles training programs. Uh, Global Mapper came a little bit later, but we've been delivering this class uh, for many, many years, uh, and it is very popular. And during the Global Mapper classes, we often get questions pertaining to projection management, coordinate systems, et cetera, et cetera. And I would recommend for you folks who maybe need a little more, even if you're using Global Mapper specifically, you might want to consider signing up for this one. It is a very, very interesting class, and obviously we do focus a little bit on the geographic calculator side of things, but there's a lot of very interesting content. So with that, uh, Scott, I'm going to give you control, and you can maybe guide us through uh, what's involved in the Applied Geodesy class. Okay, thank you, David. So the instructor-led applied geodesy training um, follows the same general parameters as Gus had described earlier, where we encourage participant interaction, and it's uh, at least partly hands-on. And the, the main difference here is that we do start off with a fairly intensive geodesy uh, section, which follows a PowerPoint presentation, then followed by hands-on instruction in the geographic calculator software and very quickly the topics in geodesy that we will cover is what is geodesy and i and i should just say if you're not sure what that is it's the science of measuring the size and shape of the earth determining position and how these things change over time and geographic calculators on the forefront of uh, time the time coordinate part of modern coordinate systems and transformations um, then we'll look at coordinate systems, ellipsoids, horizontal datums, datum transformations, vertical datums, and finally map projections. So that's a very quick overview. Let's take a look at just a couple uh, sample slides. Uh, when we talk about the coordinate systems, we'll look at the geodetic, latitude, longitude systems, and then Cartesian systems, which involve both map projections and also the geocentric or centered earth fixed systems that are centered at the center of the planet. Uh, datums and transformations, both horizontal and vertical. Um, quite a bit on that. And datum transformations are not exact because they're fitted to data. Um, so we'll look at some examples of the accuracy of datum transformations. And then finally, map projections. We'll look at the different types, properties, some terms, and examples. And we will find that there are many projections to choose from. And so in that case, based on your particular usage, what is the best map projection that you might want to use? So we'll delve into that quite a bit. So then we move on to the geographic calculator hands-on portion. And there we go. Did I miss a slide, David? Can you, how do I get back? There we go. I must have double clicked over that slide too fast. So here's a, a workflow example. And Geographic Calculator has 13 different what we call jobs to do different functions. And we're going to look today at the best fit um, transformation or a coordinate, developing a best fit coordinate system based on some data that you may have. So what the best fit job does is ties local coordinate systems that may have an arbitrary or locally significant origin and orientation into a known coordinate system. 
And the purpose really is so that we can easily transform these local coordinates into a known system. Um, to perform the best fit procedure, we do have to have control points. So these would be represented by the red dots on our image on the right here. So we have the local grid with the smaller grid spacing and a larger grid, which happens to be, it's going to be UTM in a universal transmercator in our example. And then we have these control points, which have been measured in both. That's essential for the procedure. Okay, so now moving on to, sorry, David, I flipped ahead on you, but if you could bring up geographic calculator, thank you. So we see the 13 calculator jobs on the left in the project manager, and I've created one, a point database best fit, and looking at the interface for that job, what we need is a spreadsheet of the coordinates, the, the uh, control points, in both the local and the UTM uh, coordinates that that we have here, um, they could the uh, what we call sometimes the base coordinates. That's the way it's labeled in the user interface. The known coordinates they could be in any number of different coordinate systems as long as it's something that is known and recognized by Geographic Calculator and other software. Um, so I have two columns of coordinates there. Uh, and I select those coordinate columns, both local and again, what we call base there. I can use all of the control points or I can, if I decide there's an outlier among them, I can deselect it and recalculate just on the ones I'm interested in. And very importantly, I need to select what math transform I want to use. And I've installed the upcoming 2023 Service Pack 1 that's going to be released in October because I want to tease with a new method that we've added. So traditionally we've had the Athene and the second through fifth order polynomials, but we've added a four parameter Helmert here. So in other words, we can do a scaling, a translation in X and Y, and a rotation to align the local to the known system. I have some error columns that I need to select. Um, that's gonna give me some useful data to look at my results. I'm going to click process. I also get, have some metadata here that I filled in, give it a unique name and so on. And David, can you click the process button? It may not be clicking for me. There we go, thank you. So it fills in the error fields and more useful than that, we can look at the error plot, which shows us a map of those control points with tails on them representing the uh, amount of error uh, in predicting that value back from the transform that we've developed. Now, I should have mentioned that the output of the point database best fit job is not data. It's a new coordinate system in the geographic calculator database of coordinate systems and transformations. We call it the data source. And so we now have by processing that a new object or coordinate system in our database. And I'm very going to quickly just going to show you the interactive conversion job that Jenna had mentioned where we can convert just one point. And I'm just going to show you how this would work if we select a coordinate system. I've entered a, a coordinate there in red that is uh, a valid point for the um, a local coordinate. And David, could you drag my uh, window over onto the other monitor for me? Let me click it again. Yeah, Scott, it doesn't look like that is cooperating. You're trying to click the system button. We're, we're dealing with remote desktop here, so I think there may be some technical yeah. issues that are not actually working. Okay. Um, well, maybe we can talk about we theoretically. Can, could you click the uh, WGS84 box there? I just want to show the object in the data source, and I know we're past time here. 
Yeah, unfortunately, that does not seem to be operating in, in my setup. I'm not sure okay. why. It worked in our dem in our uh, dry run, but so we we you'll have to take my word for it that we've created a new object. We can select that on the left side here, and then we can select a WGS84 system on the right, and we can convert that local coordinate out of that into known coordinates. And we can even link that up to something else like NAD27 by selecting a coordinate transformation in that center box. So we can go to more than just the system, the known system that was in that uh, data file. We can take it to uh, geodetics, we can go to different datums like NAD27 and so on. So it's very useful procedure if you have local data. So that's just one example of the kinds of things that the hands-on training will do in Geographic Calculator in the second half of the Applied Geodesy training. Thank you, Scott, and with apologies for the technical issues here, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm getting a little chime in my ear when I try to click that button, so uh, obviously we're trying to deliver this from multiple platforms, So, but obviously in the class itself, you will be local, you know, obviously you're going to be able to participate, see the constructor's machine, and um, again, geographic calculator, well, it may not be front and center for what uh, many of you are doing, maybe your Google Mapper users, uh, the, some of the underlying concepts are going to be useful in how you interact with your data there as well. So thank you, Scott. Um, we are almost, we are all out of time. Can't believe we've overshot already. <laughs> um, let me just wrap this up very quickly. Um, again, our intention in this class and this webinar, sorry, not class, webinar was to provide a brief overview of, uh, you know, what our training options are and give you a quick sample sampling of some of those procedures. So if you do sign up, you would know what to expect again, if it's a Global Mapper class or a, an Applied Geodesy slash Geographic Calculator class, a little taster uh, of, of what those workflows would entail. Um, obviously a lot more detail in the in-person classes. Also wanted to take this opportunity to, to formally introduce our self-training. For those of you who are new to either platform, it is a very, very useful uh, resource. And by all means, please, uh, Go ahead and take a look at those. I know many of you had based on the results of the poll. Um, all that's left for me to do is to thank you folks for joining us today and thank you for your questions and some of my colleagues have, have been responding to the questions. If we didn't get to your question, I promise we will uh, backfill. We've got a, a little report here, so we'll follow up with you directly. Uh, some of you have been asking more technical questions about the software itself. Uh, I would recommend if that is the case, maybe you need to sign up for some training. <laughs> uh, but we'll again, we'll make sure we answer those questions. I noted if you want some more information and training, specifically uh, our, our customer private training, there's an email address over on the right side of my screen here, training at bluemarblegeo.com is where you can send uh, for uh, re uh, request some information about how we conduct our private training, what that involves, and we'll, we can uh, obviously work with you on that. Or if you want some more information about our broad array of training options, you can see the URL over there on the left side of the screen. Um, again, thank you all for attending. Thank you for the presenters. By the way, you'll all have noticed they do have day jobs as well. So their participation in our instructional process is over and above what they really are supposed to do. So I really am grateful not only for their participation in what we've done today, but also their lending their expertise in the context of training. So uh, yeah, thank you guys for, for taking the time today. Um, we'll see you again next month, a little bit, I think it's some, somewhere late September. Uh, we'll have since introduced to a version 25 of Google Mapper, and we're gonna be sharing some of the latest news. So again, thank you folks for attending and thank you presenters.